Today I'm in Boca. I'm at the Boca Marriott, and I'm about to speak to the realtor organization. I was invited to speak as a panelist and talk about YouTube. Now, I know that that's probably not something that you're very interested in hearing about, so I'm not going to bore you with what that content is. Although, if you want to learn more about maxing out YouTube and hear me go off, then check me out on Patreon. But today, I definitely want to share some of the craziness that's entering into the marketplace and some of the crazy story that are starting to take place on a very regular basis. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to give you a quick tour of this particular resort style hotel because this pool is sick and it is a very cool venue. I have never stayed here before. But why would I? I literally live up the street, but they've got a great gym, they've got a great pool, and I'm going to give you a tour through the lobby and into where the conference is being hosted. But not before I share some of these crazy stories that are starting to become the norm, not the exception. And as a boots on the ground operator of a high performance real estate team, you know that I am constantly working with buyers and sellers in today's market. And that also includes dealing with many other agents that are in the marketplace. And if you've been watching for a while, you know that I've shared there are 90,000 agents in my market. Of that, only 1,000 do 10 deals or more a year. And what's cool about this particular conference is that the folks that are attending who are paying to be here are the top producers. So I'm going to get lots of content. Hey, how's it going? I'm going to get the opportunity to ask them what they think about the market, what the future looks like, what mortgage interest rates are going to be, because you guys know what I think. I want to hear what they think so that everybody is operating from the same place and you've got more information in order to make the best decisions for yourself, for your family, and for your financial bottom line. And it's very unusual that I ever film a breakfast buffet line, but I figure today would be a good place for me to start because there is one. Hi. Hey, how's it going? And I'll give you a little sneak peek into the auditorium. And as you can see at the front of the stage, there are chairs. And I will be one of the panelists speaking later today. But full disclosure, I know that you don't care about that. So I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time talking about those things. I do want to share the insanity that is now back in the marketplace and some of the crazy stories that I'm experiencing on a daily basis. And right now I have walked into one of the vendor spots and it uh, looks like they got some pretty good food in here, but that's kind of noisy and probably not optimal for shooting content or telling new stories. But I will say it's always an honor to be invited to speak to the best of the best. And today's going to be a lot of fun. I love to share value. But I'm looking for some privacy so I can tell you some stories about what I'm experiencing right now and what you can expect if you're thinking about buying or selling a home. But the truth is, over the course of the last few weeks, I've heard more insane stories from people trying to, in a very unsophisticated way, either negotiate or advocate for their clients or perhaps get themselves out of contracts, but they're doing it in bizarre ways. They're doing it in ways that are not optimal. And if you're thinking about buying or selling anywhere, you need to be aware that some of these crazy curveball stories are coming your way soon. But in an effort to be brief and respect your time and not turn this into a 40-hour video, I'm going to tell you the most egregious story that I've experienced recently while representing a seller where I am the listing agent. And I'll pop in some videos of the property so that you can see how incredibly sick the home is. But I know when we list a home and we market it the right way and we price it the right way, I know for certain by the amount of showings that are booked instantly, I know exactly what the demand for that particular home and product is. And so when we got this property listed in the MLS and got 15 showings on day one, I knew for certain that we would have multiple offers which bid the price higher and the sellers would get exactly what they wanted. 
And that is exactly what happened. And so in the discovery process and in collecting the contracts and in speaking with many of the agents, which to be clear, not every agent reaches out. Not every agent calls and connects and creates rapport. Not every agent does their job the right way. There are many folks who will just send in an email and then pray that they get a response. And typically that's not going to work out real well, especially if you're dealing with a hot property where there are lots of contracts. You must create rapport with whoever it is that you're dealing with. Nonetheless, we received a phone call from a prospective buyer's agent and immediately she started telling me a story. And the last thing that I'm interested in hearing is anybody's story. Just tell me what's going on. Let's have a direct conversation. Let's put the deal together. But please, for the love of God, don't waste my time with your story. Unless, of course, it's relevant to the transaction, which in this particular case, it was not. But she went on to tell me a story about how her buyer, who was from out of the country, flew in specifically to buy a home. And, well, I got news for you. That's not unique. Lots of people do that. That's not exactly a special circumstance. It's commonplace. But nonetheless, that's what happened. She came in. They thought that they were buying a home in a different community. And when they got to the property to actually lay eyes on it, what they came to learn is that the home, which was marketed as being active and available for sale, was in fact under contract. The home was not for sale. It had already gone under contract with another buyer. So you could imagine that that buyer who flew in was pissed. They were disappointed. They were very disappointed. And as was the agent. But she proceeded to tell me the story and I listened. And then she started to tell me about price and her perception of what the values of homes are in my market. And that's not unusual. I get it. But she's not an agent from my market. She's based out of Miami. And when an agent starts a conversation with me by stating that they've been doing this for 20 plus years, I know immediately that the odds are they do no business and have no clue what's actually happening right now. And that's what happened. That's exactly what it was, which is 100% predictable. And to be abundantly clear, I want to put a deal together. So I'm prepared to listen to a story and I'm prepared to play the game. But for the love of God, please get to the point. And the good news is eventually she did get to her point and she proceeded to tell me all of what she thought was relevant to the home that they are not able to purchase. But I listened and what she didn't know is that because I am a boots on the ground operator of a high performance real estate team, and I'm very familiar with the subdivision in which she was trying to buy, I know all the dirt about everything that's going on within the community. I know about the assessments. I know about the HOA. I know about the lawsuits. They didn't know any of that. And what they didn't know, but were glad to learn, is that they dodged a bullet. Because had they got that home under contract, they would have quickly learned that that home is a disaster of a neighborhood to live in. They would have learned that the assessment and the lawsuits and all of the things happening in the background would make that a suboptimal purchase for their buyer. So they were very thankful that I told them the truth and let them know exactly what's happening as it relates to that house and that particular subdivision which finally landed us in the spot I wanted to be in, which of course is discussing the house that I have listed and the house that they want to buy. And based on everything that she had shared with me, it was pretty clear they were buying a home that day and timing was critical. So we did what we must do and we bent over backwards to be as accommodating as we possibly could be. And they were thrilled. They loved it. And to be clear, I've got my finger on the pulse of the markets within my market and every other metro in the state of Florida. I know that I'm never going to overprice a home. I know how to price a home competitively in order to find the one buyer on planet Earth willing to pay more than anybody else. But evidently, this other agent had no concept of any of that. And her opening offer was $150,000 under 
where we were listed, which to be clear is totally fine. You're not going to offend me with a lowball offer. In fact, I don't even believe there's such a thing as a lowball offer. It's simply the start of a conversation, which leads to a negotiation around price. But if you think that the actual value of the home is really $150,000 less than where we're listed, then it tells me you don't have a clue about what the market actually is. And that's okay because I'm happy to provide her with the detail and the evidence which demonstrates that I do. And we did that. And I was able to advocate for my sellers the right way. And I was able to get that agent up to where they needed to be in order to win the bid. And right now I'm walking through the uh, restaurants and bars and shops that are next to the Marriott. And one of my favorites over here is Rocco's Tatos, which I don't think they see the sign for. If you're in the area and you want to have a good time and have a fun happy hour, Rocco's Tatos is the place you will not go wrong. Nonetheless, I got these people up to where they needed to be. They came in with the right price to win the bid. And I basically gave them a little bit more inside information than I should have to ensure that they actually did win the bid. But they did. It's all good. Everybody lives happily after, right? Wrong. Because during the inspection period, they did what I would do. They negotiated aggressively around the inspection. The only problem is we had the home inspected prior to listing. And the home is immaculate. Yet, yet the buyer demanded a $50,000 price reduction, which in this market for that type of property in that type of condition is completely insane. And I'm not confused. I'm aware that your home is only going to be worth what a ready, willing, and able buyer is prepared to pay right now. But what she seemed to not understand is that there were five other folks that were ready, willing, and able to go significantly higher, and that she just shot herself in the foot with this inspection negotiation. And so we canceled the contract, and that buyer and that agent went bye-bye. But 24 hours later, she called me back, basically in tears, begging me to accept the offer. And while I do certainly have some measure of sympathy or empathy for people because I understand they want to get a deal done, I can't negotiate with a pricing terrorist, and she wasn't even in the ballpark. So I wished her well and all the success in the world in finding her next home on their journey. And without even having to put the property back into active status in the MLS, we simply pivoted to one of the other buyers who was more than happy to pay exactly what they must in order to get their dream home and dream lifestyle. And I'm only sharing all this because the stories are getting crazier. The stories are getting more and more ridiculous. And the truth is, I don't want to hear anybody's story. I just want to get the job done. Now, I hope you found this content valuable. And if you did, please subscribe to the channel. Follow me on Twitter where I can never be censored. Check me out on Patreon where I go off and check out my next video because I suspect you will love it a lot. And until next time, 